This is a special little book, and it was an interesting find for me. It's Jim Henson's Tale of Sand, which was originally, as written here, a lost screenplay by Jim Henson and his partner, writing partner Jerry Jewell. Now, they worked together uh, during the 60s, and they made a short film together, which Jim Henson directed, and they wrote, I think, this and another screenplay that was unproduced, and then they did a TV special, which is really, really good. Oh, hey, it's called start, The Cube, yeah, you and you can find clips of it on YouTube, and I highly, highly recommend it. That was something I discovered in the introduction for this book. And uh, it's realized, it says here, it's illustrated by Ramon K. Perez, who's an accomplished illustrator from Ottawa, coincidentally enough. So uh, my background is I grew up in Ottawa, so that was interesting, but I never knew him. And this is a wonderful book. I actually found it really, really cheap on Amazon. Apparently, there doesn't seem to be much interest in this, but this is phenomenal. So they wrote this 40 years ago, and I had mixed feelings about Ramon's interpretation because it's so, you know, so late, uh, like 40 years later, and I feel like his style at first glance just doesn't, I don't, my first I inkling was that he didn't really quite understand what they were going for because I feel like their screenplay is uh, really highbrow in a way, but it's very comedic. It's, it's uh, surreal and comedic. But uh, I feel like because this artist wasn't born likely uh, when, when they wrote the screenplay, he, he doesn't quite understand the, uh, uh, what they were going for. And I don't know if he's as well read, but I mean, that was like my initial feeling when I first read it. I read it again recently in preparation for reviewing it. And I feel like, he, he, well, he did a phenomenal job. So, you know, no question about that. He, he did a wonderful job. Uh, everything, the whole production values of this book are really nice. Uh, this is a quite nice little thing. Everything is really thought out really nicely. So this was uh, produced, uh, sorry, approved by the Jim Henson estate. And uh, they worked with uh, Arcadia, this publisher, this comic pub publisher, to produce this. So Tale of Sand is a surrealistic comedy drama. Most of the film would be shot on location in the desert of the southwestern United States. There are many shots contrasting the vast desert lands with incongruous situations. The mood of the photography is sometimes frighteningly realistic. There is very little dialogue, and the sound effects are all slightly exaggerated, as they would be in the desert. So that's interesting to note. Um, so it, interesting design. I think I feel like uh, that was uh, Ramon's uh, doing the design. He did a nice job, you know. Like it's it's hard to interpret this so many years later, but. Overall, it's just beautiful. It's a beautifully illustrated book and very thoughtful. So, right, this is a wonderful story. Uh, there will be some spoilers. Basically, it's like just kind of like this, this big party and this guy like, you know, you don't know anything about him. He's kind of this every man as in the Cube uh, TV uh, special. That guy was an everyman. And it's amazing like how phenomenal Jim Henson was as a, as a creator, as a, as a writer, um, an unconventional thinker in many ways, you know, with his writing partner. So there's all these details and I feel like things like this, like, like, uh, you know, so he's, he's dancing and he's just sucked in and all of a sudden they're carrying him. And then, you know, it's like, what's going on? There's an armadillo looking at him. And there's a guy like with an eye patch, you know, like 
sharpening his knife. That's odd, you know. So, you know, these are all things that I'm sure were in the script, you know, uh, obviously because he's going to recur. So that's, it's just like really strange stuff, right? And uh, so then they're bringing him in and this is like the sheriff. I, I'm Sheriff Tate, but come on in, you know, be, okay, this and that, you know, I got to give you your instructions. What? Okay, instruction of what's going on. So he's, the whole time he's like, he get, uh, offers him a cigarette. He's trying to light this cigarette. He never gets to smoke it. That's a recurring thing through the movie. Uh, sorry, through the uh, uh, graphic novel, I guess. That he's just trying to have this smoke, which he, he never uh, gets. And uh, and then so this is, this is everything so hilarious. Um, so he's like, this is the map. You know, you got to follow the map to where. You know, he, you know, he's like, okay. Where do I follow the map? Okay, so now we're here. If you can get here to the Eagle Mountain, you'll be safe. Safe? <laughs> safe from what? You know, what's going on, you know? So he's not told anything. And um, so, okay, so then, uh, you know, you got to follow the map. That's all he keeps saying. You got to follow the map. And then so he's like, you know, gives him a backpack with some odd stuff. And then it's like, um, you know, oh, one more thing. Don't trust the map. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before you go, one last thing: don't trust the map. So everybody's getting autographs. They're, you know, we love you. He's like, okay, you know, like they're great. You know, like he's like the great hope or something like that. They give him like this ridiculous key, the flowers. You know, they're all useless. And uh, you know, good luck. The plane is is uh, flying above. You know. Uh, so he's, he doesn't know, he barely knows his name, you know, like we don't find out his name even. So uh, he's confused and then there's like the edge of town, there's a line crossed and it's like, go ahead, cross the line. And I feel like that's, this is surreal, right? Uh, so that's really a metaphor f for crossing the line, you know, uh, like, uh, well, not psychologically, but like uh, philosophically, you know, so, uh, socially perhaps. So, uh, so that's that's a symbol right there, which is I think just wonderful, delightful. And then everybody's like, "Run, boy, run! You got ten minutes. What? You know?" So, uh, so he's running. You know, he's running. He's just uh, running into this desert. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through all the the. the the story um, but uh, anyway so he's looking through this thing um, uh, this bag and uh, this is what he finds he's got a record he's got a stop sign he's got a record he's got some cash which turns out to be six bucks later on he's got a telescope and a small key and uh, he's, he got he's got a match <laughs> so he can finally have that smoke but as soon as he tries to light the smoke, he's getting shot at, he's got a duck. So all this crazy stuff, it's like a wild west out there in, uh, in the wilderness. So um, anyway, uh, and then he comes across these bear traps all of a sudden, and then he decides to use the key to whittle away and make his way through the bear traps. And that's one of the wonderful things about this screenplay the story is that all those items come into play throughout the story and uh, it's kind of like those things like what you, you know what do you bring on a desert island or something like that you know but it's amazing how these little things all um help him along the way and then everybody's trying to like kill him you know um here the stranger just drops a bomb and it turns out to be that that um, um, I guess he was a barber you know sharpening knife and so that barber drops a bomb there and it's um, it's kind of like a cartoon type bomb so there's a real ridiculous nature to it an absurd nature to it and uh, there's kind of like this dream quality here like this, this guy is dancing with this blonde girl. And I forget if like she was uh, also 
Was she the one that he was dancing with? No, that was a different one he was dancing with earlier. So it's like some dream girl, perhaps. You know, there's like the dove. And again, like those are all probably elements in the script. And then, the, you know, like aristocratic, you see from the screenplay. Um, so, you know, there's probably symbolism of that. Like he's just a, a, you know, layman, like a working class guy. And that guy was aristocratic. That's what he represents. You know, ridiculous kind of cartoon stuff happening here. Turtle and like getting run over. Uh, oh yeah, this is, he pulls up in a limo with the girl. Hey, you know, like, uh, I guess I'm going to get a ride. Boom, he, he opened up uh, and it's a lion. So anyway, there's wild stuff that happens throughout. Let's see, let me speed through it. Um, I'll go page by page and you could stop it and, and read it if you want. Uh, one thing that I want to comment on is like, you know, Ramon did a wonderful job. I mean, well, first the production of the book is wonderful. You see the stitching here. It's just wonderful, wonderful quality book. Every uh, attention was given to this book. Um, also, Ramon does a wonderful job like pacing things. Um, it's a little kind of too contemporary for me. Like, I feel like the storytelling is, I mean, he's trying it's experimental, so I guess it goes that way uh, in that like his storytelling is experimental uh, and so is the screenplay, so it does work that way. But he tries different things in coloring. I, I, he does everything himself, as far as I know. And um, he does wonderful things. I mean, there's like, you know, like sequences, like long sequences. There was some things, I don't know if I'll come across it, that were like, almost un unclear because of like, you know, the inventive panel layouts, but really nothing was like really hard to follow. And I really love it. So I don't know. I just, it, it was just my initial impression. I love this. I marked this little thing because I love the turtle. So this is a beautiful idea. So imaginative. And I, and I wonder if it was in the script where like it's a, it's a mesa. And then it's like you see, he sees a mesa, I suppose, and and then it just kind of gets up and moves a bit because it's on a turtle's back. And I thought that's really clever, you know. And like this, like the skeletons, uh, you know, like animated skeleton. This is just wonderful stuff. It's a beautiful montage. And if you watch Time Piece by by Jim Henson which is a like eight and a half minute a short film which you could find online you could see this wild timing stuff so you, this montage would have been so fascinating you know like the music and stuff I mean there's a reason this is here because it's probably in the script and it would have been a lot of like interesting things going on with the, the music and the images and the timing of those. So, um, oh yeah, here he's playing the record and then I guess he plays the record and that ignites the cavalry <laughs> or something. Uh, so this tank shows up, everything's blowing up. Um, you know, this guy's a bad guy. You know, uh, this is interesting. I wonder if this is a commentary on like, colonialism in America where he entices the native with the money and then as he reaches for it he pushes him over the cliff you know so I wonder if and then there's like uh, these Arabs that are after him and some football players soon enough um, here he's trying to he starts a fight with them he gets captured and he starts a fight because Again, oh, this guy was meaning to smoke his last cigarette. <clears throat> so he really wants that cigarette. <clears throat> and uh, 
here he just escapes that. I mean, beautiful work. I mean, I love how everything is like colored differently. Everything is absurd, obviously. All these different characters. A football team crashes <laughs> into him. And uh, now the Arabs and the football team are like fighting and he finds a switch and he turns that off. All the light goes off, you know, like just wild, wild stuff, which is so fun. It was really one of the best books I, well, one of the best graphic novels I read all year. And I read it twice. It's so good. And it's definitely, it's the type of book that I think you can reread over and over and find new things in it. It's so wonderful. And then now there's this guy, uh, some drunk guy. I don't know what he really represents here. But uh, he's trying to hide. The, our main character is trying to hide from these football players and the Arabs. And uh, <clears throat> don't tell them about this. You know, he's like, don't worry. He's like, you can hide in there. And uh, remember to keep quiet. He's like, you can count on me. You know, there's no, you know, he's in there. <laughs> so it's just like comedic stuff like that and I love how like the the colors uh, change within the scene you know like this scene has one color and that's I wonder if if Ramon was advised or like this is something he uh, acquired as a, as a skill because really he did a fantastic job and I'm more and more sold on like how amazing he is and talented he is as an artist So this guy keeps ratting him out, like he tries all these different doors to hide in and um, and then, you know, there's a big bar fight going on. It just, uh, uh, you know, craziness ensues. And then so he gets in here and um, she's like, well, hi there, I wasn't expecting you. And it's like that blonde girl. He's like, okay, this is interesting, you know. And then they're outside the door and she's like, oh, don't worry, you know, I'll keep quiet, you know, but it'll cost you. What's it worth to you, you know? He's like, well, uh, what do you want? She's like, money. He's like, I don't have any. You know, oh, come on, you must have something. He's got six dollars. <laughs> so, and then she uh, clears her throat and uh, gives them away. The six dollars, I guess, is not enough for her. And uh, so they're about to lynch him, but this, um, the sheriff uh, saves, like he says, he, we don't do lynching. So he's got to do a shootout with uh, this bad guy. But everybody else has got a gun on him, you know? And then this ends up being a prop gun. And uh, he's again running for his life. Hops on a bicycle. Beautiful illustrations here. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, I'm really, it, there's a lot to, to admire, really. They did a nice job uh, selecting the artist, too. Oh, yeah, so here he, he gets the car. He's trying to buy this car, but it's too much. And then he's got six bucks. And then what, all he can get for six bucks is this thing, this old beat-up beetle. Or I don't know if it's a beetle, it's some generic car. And then so, uh, you know, he's being chased by everyone. He uh, ends up stealing this uh, nitroglycerin truck. So some big catastrophe is going to happen. And uh, he's face to face with this guy. And this is kind of interesting. This is a big spoiler. He's essentially, you see, he's there because he's got a pointy nose. But here, he transforms into him. So he's actually, the whole time, he's been running away from himself. I guess that's like the, the metaphor. And time, you know, time. Uh, so it's kind of existential stuff. 
and then even the the feminine, the woman, uh, she's him too. So I don't know quite what that means. And uh, he's running, he's running, and he's back at this line. <laughs> I was like, that's odd. So he steps back, and then everybody's here. It's like, oh, welcome back. You know, he's like celebrated as a hero, and he's got that cigarette. And finally, he gets to light that baby. Congratulations, boy. This is a big day for us. Come on, son. It's about time for your instructions. And... You know, that means like <laughs> he's going to get instructed again uh, and run the course all over again. So um, this is basically re eternal recurrence. Like m maybe like even like the, you know, where the girl turns into him, it's about like loving yourself. You know, like, you know, if you can't love yourself, you know, Good, good luck finding love, you know, that kind of deal. I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure if they thought about it, but it's like the symbols are there, you know, to be uh, analyzed. And then this eternal recurrence by Friedrich Nietzsche was essentially, you know, um, well, the proposal was if a devil came to you and said that you had to live this life over and over again, how would you live it? And that's what this is, you know, every, every story that has a cyclical ending to it is, is, stems back to Nietzsche's eternal recurrence. Uh, he was the first to propose that, that idea of like having to live life, the same life over and over. So um, quite, quite a thoughtful book, quite hilarious book. Very, very funny, so enjoyable, an absolute delight. I highly recommend it. Just a wonderful production, too. Uh, you see the price tag, 30 bucks US, but you will find this maybe used either on um, eBay or Amazon for five bucks plus shipping or something like that, you know? And I believe that's what I got it for, and what a treat. Because I remember seeing it in the comic book store and then finding it uh, online, I thought, you know, oh, hey, I'll give it a go, because I, re I recalled how nice of an edition it was, and, and I made sure that it was still the hardcover and really got lucky, and this, everything is phenomenal. So highly, highly recommended. Very, very thoughtful book. I'd love to know if you read it and if you agree with some of my interpretations, what you think of it. Love to uh, read your thoughts in the comments.